Medical professionals have read it. When did you have to tell a patient? I've seen it all before to comfort them. But really you had never seen something so bad. Or of that nature? Years ago my then 11 year old shattered both femurs and her hip. At the time, her orthopedic specialist was so reassuring and confident that we had no doubts about her recovery. A year later, we went back for a review and he asked me if I'd like to see her trauma x-rays. Not having any idea of the reality I said yes. What I saw looked like her leg bones had exploded. After my freaked out reaction I commented on how cool and calm he was and how certain that she'd be fine. He said he'd actually had to go for a short walk around the hospital to collect his thoughts, since he had no idea how he would put this child back together. He also told me how to use the films as a teaching aid. He's one of my heroes. A dog bit my little sister in the face, ripping through her mouth and cheek. It was at a soccer game. She crawled on top of a big dog called a borzoi, which startled it. It rolled over and bit her in the face. This was the late 80s, smaller town. There were no pediatric surgeons available, no plastic surgeons, she was in the air with her face ripped open. Anyways, our general pediatrician, who is now my kid's pediatrician, 30 years later, who had only graduated maybe 10 years prior, sewed her face back together. It was 30 stitches on the inside of her mouth, and 30 or so on the outside. She had a massive scar down the whole side of her face. Anyway, fast forward 15 years. She grew normally, her face is fine, her smile is fine, no long term damage. Apparently, a face is full of nerves and muscles, and that's why only plastic surgeons work on faces. Particularly with children, having nerve and muscle damage can make their face grow crooked as they age. It is a highly specialized field. But in this case, there was nobody else, just a general pediatrician, and he managed to save her face, with no long term nerve or muscle damage, or even scarring, now that she is an adult. We found out 25 years later from our pediatrician's wife, that he spent an hour or so crunching his old med school books in the seat of his Plymouth Reliant in the hospital parking lot, studying facial anatomy, nerves, and cheek structure, etc. He walked into the hospital, and performed a multiple hour surgery, on her face, sewed it back together, perfectly, you would think a plastic surgeon did it. His wife told us he came home that night, just flopped down on the couch, and sat that there, amazed that he'd done it. Proud, but cautious. A new general pediatrician, sews a toddler's face back together. And it worked. Now, you would never know it happened. And he has never ever, done another surgery like that again lol. Edit, if the tense is mod, it is because he was my pediatrician then. And now that I'm old, and have a child, he is our daughter's pediatrician again. And he still, calls my by my full first name which still drives me nuts. We chose him for his excellent medicine skills, not his personality. Thank you all for the golden stories, I will share this with my sister, and probably not him next time we see him, though I can promise you he doesn't know, or care what Reddit is. He doesn't even have a computer, except the one he is forced to have at his clinic, and he calls it Henry, to spite the man who made all the doctors in his pediatrics group carry tablet PCs. Had a guy that shot himself under the chin with a shotgun. He had actually done it like 16 hours prior to family finding him. He was still alive, conscious, and alert to what was going on. His jaw looked like predator. I had family freaking out of course. Had to tell them we see worse often. Which may be true, but they are usually dead. He lived for almost a day after shooting himself, then died in the back of my ambulance. I work in gynecology, and I had to chaperone a male doctor for a pelvic exam. Patient was complaining of pain and discharge. Her vaginal area was completely red and swollen. He then so gently inserted the speculum to get a look, and immediate white cottage cheese-like substance comes pouring out onto his lap and hits the floor. Imagine dropping a container of cottage cheese on the floor. We stare in disbelief. He then had to remove the speculum and use it like a spoon, to scoop out more discharge, just so he could get a look inside. He tells her it's a yeast infection and she'll be good in no time with the prescription medicine. That day I learned, if you smile, while humming it helps, in suppressing your gag reflex. I was the patient actually. I was sideswiped by a car, then ran over by the truck behind, while cycling to work. 
I was essentially impaled by my right femur, which shattered my pelvis, and shoved bone fragments into my guts. Last thing I remember, before I got knocked out for surgery, was the surgeon telling me everything was going to be fine, and it was all routine. I didn't wake up for a month. When I did, I was missing the entire left leg, and most of the muscle tissue in the right. I was too weak to move much, couldn't talk because I had a tube through my neck, and I was very uncertain about reality due to what I went through in my coma. Parades of doctors came to tell me how I should be dead, and it's crazy that I lived. I was told over and over that my survival was very much against all odds. My surgeon on the other hand never said anything like that. He always maintained that he was going to get me through. His attitude honestly helped when I had to go back to his table a few more times before I was done. For 4 years, I kind of blew off the people who made a big deal about my survival. I adopted my orthopedic doctor's attitude. Then I met a woman who's in the medical field. I fell in love and eventually trusted her enough to let her read my medical records. I had never read them because it's a massive pile of paperwork. She broke down crying and couldn't read anymore. She told me that the beginning of my time in the hospital was full of the type of write-ups you find in the morgue. She told me that when they opened me up, bits of my pelvis fell out. I asked her to stop there. She won't read anymore and I don't want to know anymore. I now know my doctor has one hell of a poker face. As a medical student doing my first placement in the emergency department, I was waiting outside the Tridge room to ask the nurse something. I was the lowest ranking, most clueless person in the department. I knew a lot about the Krebs cycle, not a whole lot about, you know, medicine. A young man came up to me and said he was sorry to disturb me, he just wanted to check. It was just, well, not a cue jump or anything, but he wanted to check, can this definitely wait for Tridge? He then unwrapped a towel from his hand and showed me his thumb, which he had dropped a loaded barbell onto. It was shattered, just flattened, with splinters of bone coming out. I stared at it. He stared at it. I stared at it. Then I told him oh yes, no problem at all. He'd better take a seat and I'd make sure someone was with him right away. Lady came in with possible stroke symptoms, numbness, weakness, difficulty speaking, gale abnormalities, CT brain unremarkable, lab work was really odd, we were thinking cancer, so we decided to CT her chest and abdomen as well, turns out she had a dissection the entire length of her abdominal aorta, and going into her right femoral artery, left femoral had an aneurysm, and was beginning to dissect as well, she had formed a massive clot throughout her abdomen, that was miraculously keeping her alive. Basically all of her organs were ischemic, dead. About 5 different teams showed up in the air to see her. After hours of discussion, the consensus was that there wasn't a damn thing anyone could do. We sent her to hospice. Posted this before. 4th year med student here. On my ER rotation a couple months back, I walked into the ED and was immediately asked to help a nurse and resident put a catheter in a patient. Now a catheter placement is usually a one person job, so I was pretty confused as to why they needed my help. I walk into the patient room, and I'm immediately greeted by a disgusting rotting flesh smell. Worst thing I've smelled in my life. The patient has to be pushing 400 pounds, and has the worst edema, soft tissue swelling, from congestive heart failure I've ever seen. His scrotum and penis foreskin are about the size, if a small watermelon, and the foreskin had swollen completely over the tip of his penis. The nurse had a speculum, two lubgins used to look inside vaginas, inserted into the man's foreskin, while the resident took the catheter in a hemastat, pliers type thing, and jammed it into the man's pee hole for 20 minutes. They finally got the catheter in, and took the speculum out. It was covered in a thick brown discharge, that looked like fermented. I still don't know how he let his scrotum and penis swell that much. ER tech here, a few months ago we had an elderly gentleman come, in presenting with shortness of breath. As I was getting him into the gown, and into hospital socks, I noticed very old, yellowing bandaging around his foot. I inquired to its purpose, and he told me it was a large wound on the back of his heel, that wasn't getting better. I asked him, 
if I could unwrap it to inspect it slash possibly rewrap it, basic wound care is one of my duties, and it was a literal hole in his heel about 4 centimeters in diameter, skin necrotic around the edges, with a large flap of skin covering the middle. I wasn't terribly shocked, until I swore I saw the skin flap rather little bit. I got the patient's consent, to look under the skin flap, and sweet galactic Jesus, there were three sizable maggots just chilling. I've read about it before, but I have never seen it in person. My brain went what in the solar, and despite my attempt at a poker face, the gentleman read my reaction and asked, is it that bad? I was straight up with him, and told him, that the wound had maggots, and needed immediate treatment and the poor guy started apologizing for bringing something disgusting. I told him, I see this more often than you think. Maggots are actually great at cleaning out dead tissue, and are used as treatment sometimes. He seemed relieved by that, but it was definitely my first time ever seeing a maggot infected wound. I'm an RN who specializes in wound care. We see a lot of crazy things in my clinic. A common occurrence is a pilonidal cyst, which is an abnormal growth in your gluteal cleft, aka butt crack, that contains hair. It usually happens with younger people, say 13, 20s, and is obviously very embarrassing to the patient. When we get them, they've already had the surgery, to open and extract the cyst, so there's a few holes left, that we have to heal. One poor soul that came, in had the worst post-surgical hole I've ever seen. It was so big, it extended from the top of her crack to the top of her anus, then are on either side about 12 centimeters. It was like the surgeon carved out most of her butt, the patient was devastated, and I tried to comfort her, by telling her she's not the worst I've ever seen. Poor girl. Edit. So many comments. I just wanted to add that, if this is something you haven't haven't gotten it checked out, please do. Also, if you have to have surgery, make sure it's a Bascom procedure. If your surgeon doesn't know how to do it, find a different one. You may have to travel far to find one that does it, but it's worth it. Lots of stories, many already covered by others. I will share this particular story with my legs crossed. Motorcyclist came in after someone left turned without checking. He had gone over the hood, slid and somehow somersaulted landing on his ass sitting up. He slid across intersection mostly on his ass, getting serious road rash. Luckily he was only a block from hospital and ambulance. They pack him, and bring him to the ur. We end up cutting off his chaps and jeans, and begin the cleanup of gravel and sand embedded in his thighs and ass when all of a sudden, his testicles fall out of his scrotum. He had basically sandpapered a hole in his scrotum, while skidding on his ass. The attending pauses, grabs the saline, irrigates scrotum and nuts, fondles them back into place while humming. I handed him some gauze to pack the wound, and smiled at the patient who was under a local. Then I went on break, went fetal and raheved. In 2011, I had a saddle pulmonary embolism two weeks before my scheduled wedding. My quite seasoned heart surgeon seemed pretty confident that I'd be okay, and he even said he'd get me to my wedding on time. Long story short, I was in the hospital for about a month due to complications. Several weeks later, when I was visiting my heart surgeon for a follow-up, he told me he'd only ever seen two other people as sick as I was. Those two didn't survive. <laughs> Paramedic here. Had a homeless guy call saying he stepped on an L about a year ago. I could smell it from the door, so I expected it to be bad, but when I went to pick up the leg by his heel there was just nothing there. His foot just evaporated into pus and maggots and his metatarsals clinked through my fingers. While I'm standing there trying to comprehend what happened he just sighed and asked me to pick up his foot. What foot buddy, put it back on. He said it falls off a lot these days, but it still hurts so that's good right. I had no clue what to tell him. The nurses thought it was hilarious that the baby medic, that's me by the way, got grossed out 